welcome back to the channel so in this video let's do question two from the ctq series so this question is taken from jam 2016 paper the question says that among the following compounds the one that has the lowest degree of ionic character is whether it's nacl magnesium chloride aluminum chloride or calcium chloride and through this question, let's learn the concept of Fajan's rule, where we study about the polar covalent bonds and percent ionic character. So, we know that in chemistry, we have two major types of compounds. One is my ionic compounds, and then I can also have my covalent compounds. Ionic compounds would be formed by the complete giveaway and taking up of electrons. One atom would give away its electron, the other atom would completely take it up. And that would form ionic bonds in ionic compounds. But covalent compounds means it would share electrons. Two atoms would share their electrons. They're not completely giving away or taking up. They're sharing the electrons to form covalent bonds. But in actual, no bond is 100% ionic or 100% covalent. Every ionic compound, the bond of every ionic compound would have some amount of covalent character in it and the bond of every covalent compound would have some amount of ionic character in it. Okay, now let's look at the ionic character of a covalent bond. Now this covalent bonds are formed, can be formed in two cases. It can be formed either between two similar atoms or between two Dissimilar atoms are the uh, different atoms, right? So in the first case, it's formed between the two similar atoms. So I can see the first case here. The first case, it's formed between similar atoms. Now, when it is formed between the similar atoms, the shared electrons are equally available for both atoms. Both atoms, like the case of hydrogen, where I have H and H, two similar atoms. And the shared electrons are equally available for both the atoms. And it lies somewhere, somewhere midway between the bond. Now, such bonds are non-polar covalent bonds here. Now, if you come to the second case, where I can have two different types of atoms, like the case of HF, where I have a hydrogen atom and a fluorine atom. So like AB, if my compound is AB, which is a covalent compound, A would be one atom, B would be the other atom, and B atom has greater electronegativity. There's an electronegativity difference between my A and B atom means the more electronegative atom has the tendency to pull the electrons towards itself. So the electrons would be attracted to the more electronegative atom side and as a result on the less electronegative atom. So in this case, I've taken A to be the less electronegative atom. So that would get a partial positive charge and my electronegative atom would get a partial negative charge. And this gave rise to a polar compound. The molecule becomes polar. It acts as a dipole and the bond that is formed between them, though it's a covalent bond because the electrons are not symmetrically are not evenly distributed between the two atoms. It is more towards the B atom, which is more electronegative. So in such cases, we can say that my covalent bond has some ionic character in it and the bond is called polar covalent bond. Now let's look at the reverse process of it where we have the ionic bonds and we look at the covalent character that is present in those ionic bonds. Now ionic bonds can be formed between two oppositely charged species, a positively charged atom and a negatively charged atom. Now if I consider my A atom that is having a positive charge and the electron cloud of A is represented by the green color and the electron cloud of my negatively charged B atom is represented by the blue color. Now, as they approach each other, what happens is the attraction between opposite charges occurs. As a result of attraction between the opposite charges, this electron cloud gets distorted, a deformation in their shape. Now, it is symmetrical shaped. Symmetrically, the electron clouds are symmetrical. But as they approach each other, the attraction between the opposite charges would cause a deformation or distortion in the uh, symmetrical shape of the electron cloud. The electron cloud would become unsymmetrical and this process, this phenomenon is called polarization. 
Well, see, we had the uh, proper spheres earlier, but when they came together because of attraction, a deformation occurred and that's polarization. So, it is the distortion of a spherically symmetrical electron cloud to an unsymmetrical form. And this polarization is responsible for providing covalent character because now the electrons are present midway between the two, the bonds, be between the bonds that are formed. The electron charge, charge density is present there and that is responsible for the covalent character in ionic bonds. Now, let's look at two terms. The first term is polarizing power. What is the polarizing power? Polarizing power is an extent to which a cation can polarize an anion. It is a cation which causes the polarization of an anion. And the extent to which the cation can polarize the anion is called the polarizing power. And greater the charge density, greater would be the polarizing power of the cation. Clear. And the next term is polarizability. Polarizability is the extent to which my anion can be polarized. Cation causes the polarization and the extent to which it causes the polarization is polarizing power. Whereas my extent to which my anion gets polarized is polarizability. Or the ease with which an anion can get polarized is polarizability. These are the two terms that are involved. And this polar covalent bonds are more stable than this purely ionic bonds. The, rather than having pure ionic bonds, this polar covalent bonds, pure bonds, ionic or pure covalent bonds, this polar covalent bonds are more stable. And higher the degree of polarization, greater would be the stability of the polar covalent bond. As the degree of polarization increases, greater would be the stability of the bond formed. Understood. So, to explain this concept of polarization, like how should my cation be, how should my anion be, so to explain that, Fajans gave the Fajans rule in 1923. Okay, now, what are his rules? So, the first thing he told was the cation size is inversely proportional to the polarizing power, which means that if I have a smaller cation size, my polarizing power would be more. Cations are associated with the polarizing powers. They have the ability to polarize the anion. That ability is polarizing power. And cation size, if you're having a smaller size, it means that the surcharge per unit surface area is more on that. They have a greater charge density. In smaller area, all the charge would be present in a smaller area. And which means that the charge density is greater. So, in that case, if charge density is higher, the polarizing power would be higher and polarization would be more and it is more stabilized. Now, the second one that he told was the anion size. We can say that the anion size is directly proportional to the polarizability. Larger the size of the anion, larger is the ability of that anion to undergo polarization. Polarizability is directly proportional to the anion size. Then coming to the charge on the ions, so higher the charge on the ions, higher the charge on either the cation or the anion or both. Depending on the charge, we can say that if the charge is higher on either of the ions or on both ions, then higher the charge, more is the polarization. And finally, he told about the inert pair configuration and pseudo inert gas configuration. Such co compounds having such configuration, they would give higher polarizing power. What are these inert pair configuration or pseudo inert pair co inert gas configuration? In such cases, we have the d orbitals, ns2, np6, and d10. So we have the d orbital involved there. But in noble gas configuration, we have ns2, np6, which is the s and p orbitals are involved. So now, how does this cause the high polarization and low polarization? It's that in in our gas configuration, we have d orbital and d orbitals are poorly shielded. If they are poorly shielded, it would mean that they have a higher effective nuclear charge would be higher. Higher the effective nuclear charge, higher would be the polarizing power and more would be the covalent character. But in noble gas configurations, we see that the S and P 
orbitals they are highly shielded they do not have poor shielding they have good shielding so the effective nuclear charge would be lesser and hence the polarizing power would be less and the covalent character of the ionic bond would be less this is what Fajan told based on cation size anion size charge and configuration we can say to what extent my ionic bond would be covalent have the covalent properties clear now let's look at the effect of polarization what are the effects of having compounds having polarization so the first thing is the high lattice energy of bromides and iodides bromides and iodides show a high lattice energy because of this polarization of the anion and greater the covalent character covalent character increases and that is why stabilization occurs and we have higher lattice energy compared to pure ionic bonds now next case one is the solubility of ionic compounds in polar solvents it would decrease as a result of polarization as polarization increases the extent of covalent bonding increases and hence solubility of ionic compounds in polar solvents would decrease this is also one of the effects of polarization and the next effect of polarization is hardness of ionic compounds would decrease as a result of increase in polarization which in turn causes an increase in covalent bonding or covalent character hence hardness of the ionic compounds would decrease these are the effects of polarization understood so now let's look at the polar covalent bond and my polar covalent bond would be formed between two dissimilar atoms and it would have some amount of ionic character in it and we can actually find out the magnitude of that ionic character in percentage by two different formulas and the ionic character of a polar covalent bond would depend on two factors the first one is the electronegativity difference of my bonded atoms if i have atom a and b between those atoms electronegativity difference between the atoms would be one of the uh, factors and the second factor is my dipole moment of the compound where because of a charge formation a dipole is being formed because the electrons are being attracted to one side so in the covalent compound a dipole is being formed and that would give rise to dipole moment to the compound so that is another factor based on which the ionic character is dependent on and based on the electronegativity difference Pauling has given Pauling's equation which is given as percent ionic character is 1 minus E raised to minus 1 by 4 chi A minus chi B where chi A minus chi B is the electronegativity difference. Chi A is the electronegativity value for atom A and chi B is the electronegativity at, uh, for atom B. Now if I look at this table I can see that as my electronegativity difference increases my percentage ionic character increases greater the difference means more would be the pulling away of electrons and hence the ionic character would keep increasing and coming to the dipole moment part the percentage ionic character can be calculated by a formula which is the actual dipole moment of the compound divided by the dipole moment of pure ionic bond it into 100 which means you get it in percentage so if the bond was purely ionic how would my dipole moment be and now because it is partially ionic and partially covalent that would give us to the actual dipole moment and now i divide both and multiply by 100 to get my percentage ionic character understood these are the concepts re uh, related to fajan's rule or polar covalent bonds and um the percentage ionic character now let's move back to the question and solve the question using the concepts we learned coming to the question the question says that among the following the compound that has the high lowest degree of ionic character is so we are given different compounds we are given nacl magnesium chloride alcl3 and calcium chloride now from fajan's rule what did we learn we learned that the charge should be high the size of the cation should be small size of the anion should be large what all did we see, see? cation size sh cation should be small my anion should be large and the charge should be high these are the three things that we learned right now if you look here i have nacl all of them are having the anion same chlorine is anion in each case now if i look at the cation one is na plus then we have mg2 plus al3 plus and ca2 plus so what will do i have 
I have N A plus here. I have M G two plus here. I have A L three plus here and C A two plus here. So when I look at the cases, the higher charge and the smaller size of the cation is available for my third option, which is A L C L three. So I can say that. In such AlCl3 compound, polarization would be more because of higher charge and smaller cation size. The polarization would be more, and hence more would be the covalent character, and ionic character would be less. So I can say in my the lowest degree of, of ionic character would be in my option C. AlCl3 is the right answer. So that's it about Fujian's rule and my CTQ question two. Hope you're enjoying this series of CTQ questions. See you again with another video. Thank you so much.